Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, at your service to talk about a type of an antenna known as a double zip. Uh, I just uh, made a video yesterday, today is the 23rd of June, I believe, 2014, so I made a video yesterday or the day before about collinear antennas and this is in fact a form of collinear array two half wave length radiators in a straight line a common line fed at the center so the entire length of the antenna is a full wavelength half wavelength on this side half wavelength on that side both conductors straight and both conductors lying along the same line. That's why we can call it a collinear array. An antenna like this will present a very high purely resistive impedance at the feed point, just like an antenna called the ZEP will do. In fact, they call this a double ZEP because it's like two ZEPs connected back to back. And when you do that, uh, you get a current distribution pattern that looks like that. Current loops in the center of each side, current node or voltage maximum at the center, and of course voltage maxima and current minima at the ends. So that results in a very high impedance. Purely resistive. The antenna is resonant. Another uh, thing that they sometimes call this it's you can think of it as a dipole a half wave dipole antenna fed at its second harmonic to produce two half waves in phase in phase meaning that the currents go in the same direction on either side they're not distributed like this. Not like that, no. But like like this. So when you do that and you get a double zip antenna, you end up with a radiation pattern that looks very much like that of a dipole. The maximum radiation is off the sides and minimum off the ends, but there is a sharper lobe off the sides. That means that the directivity is much narrower and you get some gain over a dipole. You might get 2 to 3 dBd of gain. You should feed an antenna like this with open wire line and you have two choices. You can either use a transmatch here in which case this line can be any length you want and then connect that to the radio or you can use a ballon a one-to-one -one ballon and if you do that and you choose the characteristic impedance of this line so that it's just right you can get a pretty good match to 50 ohms without the need for a trans match although these days trans matches well there is one company that makes a very good trans match although it's pricey and it's great for balanced antennas like this the name of the company is pal star and every time i do a video having to do with open wire line that you would tune with a trans match i try to mention this company because they make excellent trans matches and uh, they go to their website just search on Palstar and you'll get to their website and you'll find the true balanced antenna tuner. If you decide to use a ballon, you'll want the characteristic impedance of this section of line to be the geometric mean of the impedance at the feed point and 50 ohms. And you'll want it to be a quarter of a wavelength long so that it serves as an impedance matching transformer. That can be a little bit tricky and to be honest with you I have never actually built one of these to find out what that characteristic impedance would be. But I would venture to say that if this if you use a 300 ohm 
window line or something like that, you should get pretty good results. I should call the um, Technical Information Service at the American Radio Relay League headquarters and find out exactly what to expect for the impedance at the feed point of something like this. It would be half the impedance at the feed point of a single ZEP because this double ZEP is in effect two ZEPs connected in parallel. Uh, so I believe that the uh, impedance would be half. So it might be a couple of thousand ohms, 3,000 ohms here. Let's just suppose, for the sake of calculation, that this were, in fact, 2,000 ohms. So we take the geometric mean of 2,300. And what we need to do, if we're going to do that, is multiply 2,000 times... 300 and then take the square root of the result well now there there's there's a problem here no this should be the 2000 times 50 I'm sorry the 300 should be the geometric mean of 2050 let's do that over if you get a nonsensical answer something nowhere near the ballpark when you're doing something like this, you can be pretty sure you made a stupid mistake like I just did. 316 ohms. So if you had a 316 ohm open wire line and 2,000 ohms of purely resistive impedance here, you'd get 50 ohms here. So it should be pretty close, but this is something that you're going to have to try for yourself if you want to. Uh, it, this would be a good antenna if you have some real estate to work with on the bands at 3.5, 7, and maybe even 10 megahertz. If you really have a lot of space, 1.8 megahertz. I remember when I uh, went to the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, W0YC was their club station, and they had an antenna something like this. Actually, they had what they call an extended double ZEP, which I will do a video about shortly. Uh, instead of half a wavelength on either side, it's five-eighths of a wave, and then you do need a tuner down there. You get a little bit broader lobe that way and a little bit more gain, closer to 3 dBd for sure. But they had a 160-meter extended double ZEP. That would have been over 500 feet long. And how they did that from a dormitory is kind of beyond me. <laughs> but, uh, but they managed somehow to get permission from the university authorities there to string up uh, an antenna over 500 feet long on university dormitory property. Go figure. That was Those were fun times. W0YC, they had some old equipment there. And I ran a kilowatt at night sometimes from there using the... Um, Heathkit transmitter, I believe they had, and along with a Collins 75A4 receiver. If you're an old, real old timer, you'll remember that one. And they also had a Viking Valiant transmitter, which I never used because it had key clicks. <laughs> well, uh, no, nobody's per no uh, manufacturer is perfect, or no radio is perfect, I guess. But that's a double ZEP antenna, the basic theory and principle behind it. Stan Gibalisco. Whiskey one, good vibrations, saying 73 for now, and so long.